On this episode of 5 Minutes of Cloud, we're going to dive deeper into the NIST model, National Institutes for Standard and Technology model for cloud computing, and we're going to cover the essential characteristics. Now in the NIST model, again, there were a couple of different systems domains. We talked about essential characteristics, we talked about service models, and we talked about deployment models. In this particular episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about the essential characteristics. Uh, now from the overview, we talked about the fact that there are five essential characteristics. There is the on-demand aspect, self-service aspect. There is the concept of uh, pooled resources. There's the concept of elasticity. Uh, a concept of meterability, the ability to actually capture data on how much is being consumed, and lastly, the concept of broad network access. If we look at all of these, I really think that the on-demand self-service aspect is the most critical. With this concept, we can actually build out all of the rest of these resources and essential characteristics as requirements. Uh, because it's on demand, I have to have some resources that I can pull from. If I don't have them pre-staged effectively, there's no way they can truly be on demand because I would have to wait for some other event to happen before I could actually get that resource. So on demand drives the concept of pooled resources. So pooled resources, Clearly, I need to have a pool of resources in order to bring the entire cloud service together and, and allow it to be on demand. If I have only one computer, I can't give out one computer to multiple people. As a virtualization, that's a slight variant of this, but the concept is still that I want to have multiple resources pooled together. Now, pooled resources also want elasticity. The concept behind elasticity is that not just that I can consume resources, uh, bring them into my fold and use them as I need them, uh, but that I can also give them back. Uh, give them back might be erase them. Uh, for example, if I create a user and consume some data space for that user in, in a service-based model, I would actually want to erase that user and reclaim the data space and potentially the resources that were used by that user. Um, in the more com uh, common compute sort of model, yes, I'd like a computer on the internet, for example, um, I would want to be able to delete that, that resource and return the CPU and memory back into the pool of resources so that I could consume it more efficiently. Now, getting these resources elastically is great. Uh, human nature does not often let us think about returning things. Often we think about taking but not giving. It's a, it's a very common reaction. I get access to something that's now my resource and I'm going to cons consume that resource. The cloud model wants us to leverage this concept of elasticity, and the best way to do that is by metering, understanding what has been consumed, what is not being used, and what can be returned. Um, one of the ways that that happens best is by metering against the concept of a bill. Uh, it costs you $100 a month to use these resources, but if you'd return some of them, it would only have been $50 a month. That's a very powerful motivator to drive elasticity. Uh, so while it's not required for elasticity, it's often required to make the service functions so that I know how much has been consumed, even if it's just so that I can actually request more resource to put into the pool so that I can get a bigger pool over time. So that's four of the characteristics. The last characteristic is the one that often gets overlooked when people talk about cloud because it's effectively the obvious characteristic. I have to have broad network access. If I don't have broad network access, then these resources are very difficult to get access to, which also means that having them on demand often doesn't help unless I go specifically to the facility to get access to these resources. So having broad network access is an important characteristic. Uh, now, the NIST model also talked a lot about security as, a, an, as an aspect to this because they were thinking about this from the perspective of I might have secret classified services, uh, top secret services, or uh, um, uh, general, uh, general classification services, and I might want to have those separated out. Well, broad network access does not mean always open network access. I can have broad network access that is highly secure, allowing things like top secret clouds to exist, uh, but I need to be able to get access to that from wherever access to those resources are allowed, uh, is a way of thinking of it. So again, our, our essential characteristics, broad network access, key, and obviously overlooked, or often overlooked, rather. Um, we have uh, the concept of elasticity, which is built on top of pooling, and to make elasticity work, because we're humans, we have to drive some kind of re return response, so we want to be able to meter and potentially bill against uh, the metered consumption. And of course, to make all of this happen, to drive all of this on-demand self-service so that we can get access to, the res access to these resources when we need them. Again, this has been Robert Starmer bringing you 5 Minutes of Cloud.
Thanks for watching. This was Robert Starmer bringing you five minutes of cloud. Five Minutes of Cloud is brought to you by Chemos Technologies, the company I actually work for. Uh, and we really appreciate the fact that you actually attended and watched this, this little segment. Um, we obviously have a YouTube channel here, so please subscribe to that. Uh, we have Twitter. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Yeah, I, I do actually find some interesting things to say on Twitter once in a while. Um, and on top of that, we have a mailing list. Uh, if you subscribe to the mailing list, we have a, a free report, basically five pitfalls of cloud that you can avoid uh, if you get my report. So uh, why don't you hop on over to our website, uh, sign up for the mailing list. You'll get that report delivered to your inbox uh, shortly after signing up. And I think that's also another very interesting and important read. Thanks so much again for watching.